Hi, it's Sunday, March 16th. I'm Jeremy Shea, the producer of Gavel, Alaska, and it's, it's snowing in Juneau. Um, last week was very busy in the legislature, and, and for us. Um, had a lot of long nights, and lots of big pieces of legislation are starting to move, uh, such as HB 266, the operating budget, HB 278, the governor's education package, SB 138, the governor's natural gas pipeline bill, and uh, SB 64, which is Senator John Coghill's crime reform package. Lots of floor debates last week. Um, if you're a casual viewer, those are probably the most interesting things to watch on Gavel, Alaska. Um, and unfortunately, very, very hard to figure out when to watch because the, uh, the scheduling tends to be very last minute and, and subject to change without notice. Uh, oftentimes, floor sessions will be delayed indefinitely, waiting on committee action on a bill. And oftentimes, the committees will be delayed indefinitely too while they're waiting for uh, amendments and new versions of bills to be drafted. That said, uh, floor debates rarely change the outcome of the vote. If you watch, you'll notice that just about every piece of legislation that reaches the House or Senate floor passes. It's very, very rare for bills to fail in a floor vote. Uh, I actually went back and researched just how rare it is. I looked at the 26th and 27th legislatures, so 2009 through 2012, in those four years, in that time, more than a thousand bills died. Almost every piece of legislation that died, died be by default at the end of the two year cycles the legislature works in. Of those thousand plus failed bills, I only found three that died unambiguously in a floor vote. So three out of more than a thousand. So it's, yeah, very, very rare. Um, there's a lot more on why that happens like that in the Gavel Alaska Guide for the iPad that you can download for free on the iTunes, iTunes store. Uh, we also have a kind of clunky PDF version up on our website too if you don't have an iPad. Let's get to the rundown for Monday, March 17th, day 56 and St. Patrick's Day. We're starting at 8.30 in the House Finance Committee where Larry Persley is giving a presentation on natural gas markets. Larry's an ex-Alaskan, ex-Junoite, ex-journalist, uh, former staffer to Representative Mike Hawker, um, and he got plucked by the Ob Obama administration a few years back to work on the Alaska natural gas pipeline uh, stuff for the feds. Uh, he's a very smart guy, very good communicator. He's actually going to be in our studio on Monday evening, too, on a um, natural gas pipeline panel for a new episode of Forum at 360 that we're taping and live streaming. Uh, it should be a less intimidating way to learn about the gas pipeline proposal. It's very, very complicated, and, and you know, he's, he's a good guy to, to learn about it from. I'd encourage you to watch that stuff if you get a chance. Uh, we'll be live streaming the taping at 6 p.m. Monday, and it'll be on 360 North TV on Friday at 8 p.m. You can even join our studio audience for the taping, too, if you like. We're at uh, 360 Egan Drive in Juneau. At 9 a.m., Senate Finance is meeting. Three bills on their plate. Uh, the one that piqued my interest is SB 108 by Senator Fred Dyson. He's a Republican from Eagle River. It makes certain arrest records confidential if the arrestee is eventually acquitted or his case, his or her case, is dismissed. Uh, the idea being that arrest records have um, serious life consequences in and of themselves, even if the arrestee is never ultimately found guilty of anything. Um, as a journalist, this is pretty interesting to me. It, you know, pits some um, public records and right to know issues against privacy and unintended consequences. Um, yeah. House is on the floor at 11 with two bills. HB 297 is by Rep Republican Anchorage Representative Lance Pruitt. It just formally designates the Alaska Housing Finance Corporation as the agency to approve home energy rating systems for Alaska. Uh, the designation is something federal law is looking for, so it's kind of more of a housekeeping thing than a uh, serious substantive thing. Uh, the other bill on the House floor is HB 212 by Representative Doug Isaacson, uh, a North Pole Republican. Lots of co-sponsors on this. This is the driver's license perk for military folks in Alaska. Um, it gives military spouses with out-of-state driver's licenses an exemption from getting licensed in Alaska. If you're not exempt, you're supposed to get an Alaska license within 90 days of, of coming to Alaska. Uh, it's not real controversial, except um, except for what about same-sex partners in the military. Um, so that has been interesting. It could get interesting again in this floor debate. At, also at 11 a.m., the Senate is on the floor for its session. They've got six items on their calendar, the big one being SB 138, the natural gas pipeline bill. Um, I thought I read somewhere that they might just be rolling it forward to Tuesday, but, you know, it's they go through multiple readings, the initial reading to get it introduced in the legislature is the first reading, second reading, um, theoretically they do amendments on second reading, and then third reading is the final reading. Uh, oftentimes the second and third readings get, get rolled together or, you know, they take it to third reading and then they roll it back to second reading in order to do amendments and then go back to third reading to finally push it out the same day. Um, yeah. 
In the afternoon, we're following HB 325 and House Resources at 1 p.m. This is by Judo Representative Kathy Munoz, a Republican. It tries to bump up a four cent per barrel of oil tax on oil producers to seven cents. This specific tax or surcharge is designated for oil spill prevention and cleanup. Uh, Representative Paul Seaton, a Republican from Homer, is a co-sponsor. He had tried to get the same bump into SB 21 last year. That's that was the big oil and oil uh, oil tax rewrite um, or tax cut. Got, it got shot down last year. Uh, we're going to story related to this for the 25 year anniversary coming up of uh, the Exxon Valdez spill. At 1.30, House Finance has a bunch of education bills. The governor's education package, repealing the high school elective exam, charter school stuff. A bunch of different bills that touch on things that are in the governor's education package. At 3.30, Senate Resources has HB, two se uh, HB 77 on its agenda. This is the governor's water rights and permitting bill. It's been very controversial. Kept us up uh, work, working late on Friday because they had hours and hours of public testimony on it. Um, pretty overwhelmingly opposed to it. Uh, in, in broad strokes, the, the industry likes it. Uh, it makes it easier for them to get permitted to do stuff, you know, whether it's mining or, or whatever else. Uh, the little guy doesn't like it, whether it's hunters or fishermen or whomever else that, that relies on Alaska's waterways. Um, they say the bill silences their voice in the permitting process. That's been the main concern and also, you know, makes DNR more powerful. Uh, okay, that's it. Thanks for watching and happy St. Patrick's Day.